Welcome back students to another lecture of fluid mechanics. We were trying to solve a problem which included the calculation of different head losses due to friction and due to bends at pipe. And also we were supposed to calculate the discharge or rate of flow of water through the pipe. Okay, so this was the problem which we were discussing. I would request you to go back to the problem and see it if you haven't already. So the first part of the problem had been solved. Okay, let's again go through the problem. Water is flowing through a pipe of diameter 20 centimeter and length 50 meters. When one end of a pipe is connected to a tank and the other end of the pipe is open to the atmosphere. The pipe is horizontal and the height of water in the tank is 4 meters above the center of the pipe. Okay, so this is the arrangement that is shown in this problem. Okay. So we were having a pipe of length 50 meters and diameter 20 centimeter. It is connected at one end to a tank. So water is basically flowing through this pipe into the tank and inside the tank, the water is considered to be stationary. Okay. Or the velocity at the tank is velocity of uh, water in the tank is zero. Whereas uh, water is flowing through this pipe. Hence in the pipe, there will be some velocity. Okay. Now the free surface level of the water in the tank is exposed to atmosphere and also the flow at the outlet of the pipe is also in contact with the atmospheric pressure, right? So this was the basic arrangement and we were supposed to calculate the rate of flow of water in the first part and the second part asks us to draw the hydraulic gradient line and total energy line. So this part had already been solved in the previous video. I would request you to go and watch it, okay? So we had basically implemented the Bernoulli's equation um, to, to calculate the rate of flow. Now, today we will learn how to draw the hydraulic gradient line and the total energy line, right? Let's move on to the main calculation now. Okay, so what is total energy line? Total energy line is uh, defined as a line which will give us the sum of pressure head, datum head and the kinetic head of a fluid which is flowing inside a pipe. Okay. With respect to a reference line or a datum line. Right. Now, in order to find the total energy line or the hydraulic gradient line, we must first choose certain points. Okay. Certain key points at which the total energy heads or the hydraulic gradient has to be calculated and then we have to plot these ordinates with respect to the reference line and join the points in order to find the total energy line or the hydraulic gradient line. So for this arrangement that is for the tank which is connected to a pipe, we will choose three points. Okay, what are these three points? Let's, let me show you. So one point we will be choosing at the free surface level of the water in the tank okay so this is our point a this is one point second point we will choose we will be choosing the point at the inlet of the pipe okay this is the inlet of the pipe okay this is our point b and the third point that is point c we will be choosing it as the outlet of the pipe okay so these are our three points a b and c please do not get confused now we have to calculate the total energy heads at point A, at point B and at point C. Okay, so let's see. So what is my uh, total energy head? It is equal to the summation of pressure head. Okay, this is my pressure head P by rho G plus velocity head or kinetic head. This is V squared by 2G plus datum head or Z. Now, you have to keep one thing in mind whenever you are calculating the total energy or the hydraulic gradient, you have to choose a certain reference line or a datum line. So in this case, for this arrangement, it is wise to choose the datum line through the center line of this pipe. Okay, so let me draw it. Let me draw it in orange. So this is my datum line or the reference line and with respect to this line i will be calculated all the energy heads okay now see um it was given in the problem that the height of the free 
water, the free surface of this water level in this tank was at a distance of four meter from the center line of the pipe. Okay, let me show that as well. So this height, this height was given as how much? It was given as four meter, four meter, right? Now let's calculate the total heads. So at point A, uh, the pressure head, okay, the pressure head that is P by rho G will be how much? See, the point A, this free surface water level is exposed to the atmospheric pressure. So the pressure force at this point A will be zero. And as a result of that, what happens? As a result of that, this term will become zero. The pressure head will become zero because the free water surface level is in contact with the atmospheric pressure. Now again, in the tank, the water is not flowing, the water is stationary. So what happens? The velocity is also zero. And since velocity is zero, the velocity head or the kinetic head will also become zero, right? So this term, that is the velocity head, is also going to be zero, zero, clear? Now we have this datum head. So what will be the value of datum head? The datum head will be measured with respect to the datum line. This is my datum line or the reference line. So the distance of the height of point A with respect to this datum line is how much? Four meter. So my datum head at point A is four. So I'm writing it as zero plus four plus, uh, sorry, zero plus zero plus four, which is equal to four meter. So the total head at point A is four meter. Next, I have to calculate the total head at point B. That is the point at the inlet of the pipe, okay? So how do I calculate it? I will simply subtract. See, uh, one thing you have to keep in mind, whenever there is an inlet, okay? Uh, there is an inlet or in a pipe or there are bends in a pipe or there is a sudden expansion or a contraction in the pipe, there will always be a certain head loss, okay? So whenever you are calculating the total energy head at this point, that is at the inlet of the pipe, you have to take in account those head losses. So what I'm doing, in order to calculate the total energy head at B, I will simply subtract the head loss that is occurring at the entrance of the pipe from the total energy which I had calculated for the point A. So what you have to do, you have to simply subtract the head loss due to the entrance of the pipe from the total energy which you had calculated for this point that is A, okay? So, you have, so, so, so if you simply subtract the head loss from the total energy at point A, you will be getting the total energy at point B. Now how to calculate the head loss at the entrance of pipe? See, I have already shown it here head lost at the entrance of the pipe is given as 0.5 V square by 2G. Okay, if you uh, go back to my video on the major and minor losses of energy or head losses, then all the formulas for different conditions of pipes and friction has been given there. Okay, you can also find this in any standard fluid mechanics book, this, this formula. So, we are calculating the head loss due to entrance of pipe, which is given by 0.5 V square by 2G. Now, V, this, this value V, the value of velocity, that is the velocity of flow through this pipe had already been calculated in the previous video. Clear? It is already, I will just show you. See, in this, in the previous video, I had already calculated the value of velocity, which is equal to 2.734 meter per second. So the velocity of flow through this pipe is how much? It was, it is 2.734. So if you simply substitute the value of V in this expression, you are getting the head loss due to entrance at pipe as 0.9 meters. Okay, this is 0.9 meters. So now let us come back to this equation. So total energy at A is how much? 4 meter minus head loss due to entrance of pipe is 0.19 meters. 
So my total energy head at point B is equal to 4 minus 0.19, which is equal to 3.81 meters. Clear? Okay. Now let's move on to calculate the total energy head at point C. Right? So at point C, okay, I have to clear the drawings. Okay, now um, let me just redraw the datum line so that it is easy for you to understand. So this was my datum line and this is my point C. So the total head is equal to pressure head plus velocity head plus the datum head. So point C is exposed to atmosphere or, or it is in contact with the atmospheric pressure, which means that the total pressure force at this point is zero, which also means that the pressure head, this term is going to be zero, right? So this term is going to be zero. Here, now what about this velocity head? I've already told you that water is flowing through the pipe, which means that there will be some velocity. And what is the velocity? The velocity which we had calculated earlier, that is V is equal to 2.734. Okay, keep this in mind that the velocity of flow through the pipe is equal to 2.734 meter per second, right? So there will be certain velocity head, okay, plus the datum head. Now, what is the value of datum head? See, point C is lying just on the datum line or the reference line. Is there any difference in height between the datum line and point C? No. The value of Z or the datum head is equal to zero. So, this value again, this datum head at point C is again going to be zero. Clear? So, here, so. I'm substituting the different values that is 0 plus v square by 2g plus 0. So if you substitute the value of velocity, you are getting the total energy at C as 0 0.38 meters. Okay. See, now we have the values of total energy at point A. Okay. This is my total energy at point A, 4 meters. Okay. Then we have the total energy at point B as how much? 3.81 meters, right? And the total energy at point C, that is at this point, the value is 0 0.38 meters. Okay, these are our three values of total energy at three different points A, B and C. Now, let us choose a point D, okay? Let us choose a point D, okay? Now this D point, see, is at the same level where point A is, okay? So we are taking this point D as the ordinate, okay? With respect to the reference line and the value of this ordinate at D is how much? It is going to be four meters. Let me just write it down. The ordinate at point D is how much? It is four. I'm just writing four, okay? Now, see, this point B, okay, this point B is also lying on this point D. But what is the value of total energy head at point B? It is slightly reducing, okay, from 4, it is reducing to 3.81 due to the head losses, okay, due to the head losses at the entrance of the pipe. The total energy at A that was 4 meter is slightly reducing to how much? 3.81 meter. So this ordinate will be slightly down. It will be slightly um, lower than the point B. Okay. Now suppose, suppose the point, the ordinate at D gets reduced to this amount. Okay. What is this amount? This, this reduction amount is nothing but 0 0.19 due to the head loss at the entrance of the pipe. So if it gets reduced by 0 0.19, then we are getting the value as this at E, we are getting the value as 3.81 meter and this is 
and we are choosing e as the point of the ordinate at which the value of total energy head is 3.81 3. Point, Eight one. Okay, it's quite difficult to write like this. Anyway, okay. So initially, at point A, corresponding to point A, we were having the ordinate at D, whose value was four, and then, because there is an entrance of the pipe, the total energy gets reduced by zero point one nine, and it. the the value of total energy gets reduced to 3.81 here okay so point the value of ordinate at point is 3.81 now next we have point c so what is what what is the value of total energy at point c the value of total energy at point c was 0.38 meters okay so suppose uh, if you if you plot it the value of this total energy will somewhat come at here okay the value will be somewhat here and i'm marking this ordinate as f and the value of this ordinate is how much 0.38 meters okay so you have got all your three ordinates okay that is marked by point d and then the second ordinate is marked by point e which is equal to 3.81 and the third ordinate is marked by point f which is equal to 0.38 meters so if you join these three points okay let me join these three points i will join it using the green line i'm drawing the point c from d i've come to a e and then from e i am going to f right is this visible from d i am coming to e and from e i am joining again the line to f okay so this is going to be my total energy line okay now see i have written that the total energy line or i should write it again that is the total energy line is given by is given by d e f clear this is my total energy line now next we have to calculate the hydraulic gradient line okay so okay so what is hydraulic gradient line hydraulic gradient line is defined as a line which gives the summation of pressure head and the datum head of a fluid that is flowing in a pipe with respect to some reference line okay so we know that our reference line was passing through the center of the pipe okay the reference line was passing through the center of the pipe now with respect to this reference line we have to calculate the value of hydraulic head at a at point b and at point c so the value of hydraulic gradient can be obtained by summation of or by summing up the pressure head with the datum head clear i think i have to draw it here once again okay so this was my tank right and a pipe was attached to this clear and the free surface level of the water is somewhere over here okay and my datum line is passing through the center line of this pipe okay suppose this is the center line of the pipe and what is the distance of the free surface level from this datum datum line it is 4 meters 4 meters right and i was i chose 
we were we had chosen three points one is point a okay this is point a and here that is just at the entrance of the pipe we had chosen the point as point b and at the outlet of the pipe okay we had chosen the point as point c right now we have to calculate the hydraulic gradient at point a at point b at point c now see the we can calculate hydraulic gradient by adding up the pressure head with the datum head so what is the pressure head at point a see at this point the water is in contact with atmospheric pressure so the pressure force is zero so this term will become zero this term becomes zero right but what is datum head datum head is 4 meter because this is the height of the free surface level from the reference line okay so if i substitute the values i am getting hydraulic gradient at a as 4 meter next in order to find the hydraulic gradient at point p what we are going to do we will simply um, deduct the velocity head okay at point b from the total energy head which we had already calculated in the previous discussion okay we, we had already calculated total energy at b as 3.81 okay 3.81 and what is my velocity head velocity head is v square by 2g v square by 2g which is equal to how much this is equal to 2.734 to the power 2 divided by 2 into 9.81 okay this is my velocity head and this is coming out to be as how much 0 0.38 okay this is coming out to be as 0 0.38 okay now we had already calculated the total energy head at b it was 3.81 and if we simply subtract the velocity head from the total energy head then we will get the summation of pressure head and datum head and it is going to be equal to 3.43 see so at the, the hydraulic gradient at point a was 4 meters then at point b the hydraulic gradient is reducing a little bit which is equal to 3.43 meter and the hydraulic gradient at c is how much the total energy head at c minus the velocity head at c right so what is the total energy head at c it was coming out to be 0 0.38 see the value is given here this is the value okay this is my total energy head at point c that is 0 0.38 right now the to this is my total energy which is equal to how much 0 0.38 and if you calculate the velocity head the value of ve velocity head is also coming out to be 0 0.38 so if you subtract the values then you are getting the total hydraulic grade uh, the or the hydraulic gradient at point c as zero so you have all three ordinates you have the ordinates of hydraulic gradient at point a that is four meter then you have at for point b you have 3.43 and for point c you have the hydraulic gradient as zero right now how will you plot it let me show you that too i will plot it using which color i will plot it using blue clear okay so suppose i am choosing a point which is at the same level as a okay suppose that point is d okay so this is my point d and from there i will okay wait okay so the hydraulic gradient at point a is how much four meter so let that be somewhere here okay this point 4 meter should always be at the same level with the uh, point which is chosen at the free surface water uh, in the tank okay so this is my point d in at which the ordinate is how much 4 meter okay this is my hydraulic gradient then this then 
B is also a point which is lying just below below this point. Okay, so at B, what happens? The hydraulic gradient value de decreases a little. It reduces a little. So my value will go somewhat down, right? And then at point C, the value re re reduces to absolutely zero. So where is my zero point? Where is this ordinate? Since the value that is the hydraulic gradient at point C is zero, is zero, then this this point is going to lie at the reference line. Okay, this point is going to lying at the reference line, which means that my zero point is on the reference line or on the datum line. So if I join these three points, let me just join these three points. So this is my one point this is my hydraulic gradient for b point and then if i join this line with the hydraulic gradient value at the c point that is zero then i will obtain the hydraulic gradient line okay so this line which is shown in blue is my hydraulic gradient line right let me just h g l okay this is my hydraulic gradient line now if you Compare the total energy line and the hydraulic gradient line. How will it look? Okay, see, this is my. Okay, this one here, this one, this was my total energy line, right? And since the value of hydraulic gradient is a little bit lesser than the total energy at point B, the hydraulic gradient at point B, the, the ordinate of hydraulic gradient at, at point B will lie somewhat lower than the total energy at point B. Okay, so this was my hydraulic gradient ordinate, the ordinate for hydraulic gradient at point B, which is lying a little lower than the ordinate of total energy at point B. So this point I'm marking it as G and if I uh, join this ordinate with the ordinate of hydraulic gradient at point C, then I will be obtaining the hydraulic gradient line. So let me show it in some other color. Let me show it in green. So this So this, this line from D, G, C, this line D, G, C is my hydraulic gradient line and line D, E, F is my total energy line. I hope this is clear. I hope you know now how to draw the total energy line and how to draw the hydraulic gradient line. Even after this, if you are having a problem, feel free to ask me your doubts. You can post your doubts in the comments. Until then, take care, goodbye and definitely do this problem on your own.